AUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson Navigation, serving Guam and Micronesia for 20 years. The all-new 2018 Kona by Hyundai, available at Cars Plus. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Coming right up on your primetime news, some major relief in the H-2B worker crisis. Nick Delgado has the governor's latest position on the military buildup. Plus, where's the beef? More arrests made this week as police crack down on reports of corned beef theft. Crystal Paco has details. And a public transportation service fail. One rider sped up after being constantly denied a ride on the bus. He spoke with Arkeani Mendiola. Afrae Guam and good evening. If you're watching us on air or online, we thank you for tuning in tonight because there are big developments, Bree, in the H-2B worker crisis as hundreds of foreign labor visa petitions have received final approval. The approval falls under the 2018 National Defense Authorization Act. So does the progress change Governor Eddie Calvo's mind about the military realignment? KUAM's Nick Delgado shows us in tonight's top story. Governor Cavill is calling it great news. At this point, 333 approvals, all through a PHC corporation, uh, which is uh, doing some work at Anderson Air Force Base. So it falls in line uh, with the authorization through the De National Defense Authorization Act. Cavill last month supported PHC Corporation's applications to USCIS seeking the more than 300 workers for military-related projects, a next step to the end of the construction labor woes. This all comes after District Court Chief Judge Francis Tedinko Gatewood granted a motion for class certification. The ruling applies to companies whose petitions for temporary foreign workers were denied or were set for denial. They are now part of the group of companies who won their lawsuit that requires the USCIS to revert back to a policy where petitions were routinely approved based on temporary need. We do anticipate these contractors uh, putting out a petition for H-2B workers, and these are outside the gate type of projects, uh, some of it education related, some of it for uh, building of uh, housing units and, and uh, residential uh, 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 buildings, uh, and, and uh, also I think we have also one on infrastructure for wastewater. Uh, in our southern area. So we, we anticipate the movement of these petitions. The contractors sued after an apparent policy change beginning in 2016, where nearly 100% of H-2B applications were denied. The federal government has appealed the ruling, but that's not stopping the progress. Calvo saying he will work with the White House, the Department of Defense, and Homeland Security, and press the feds to have all future H-2B petitions come through his office. Does that change your position with the military buildup? At this point, we're looking at the one Guam approach. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's good that we're, we're, we're getting these workers for the military base that hopefully will alleviate some pressures to get some of our American workers into projects outside uh, the gate. But again, I believe if, uh, if the federal government uh, believes it's necessary to bring in foreign workers for the military bases, then I, I do believe uh, we should also have that same standing uh, for us in the civilian community. So uh, until we see fairness and what I see is discrimination at this point, uh, you know, I, I can't be in wholehearted support uh, of, of the moves that have been made so far uh, in terms of the four pillars and the one Guam approach. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahusi Nick Delgado. A suspect taken into custody on Anderson Air Force Base could be facing murder charges. Military investigators confirm they received the autopsy report for Airman First Class Bradley Hale. He was found dead from an apparent stab wound on the Air Force Base more than a week ago. Now that his death has been ruled a homicide, investigators are reportedly keeping the suspect confined. However, no word on how soon charges could be filed against the unidentified suspect. Authorities also have yet to say if they've determined a possible motive. In other Island News headlines tonight, where's the beef? Cases of Ox and Palm brand luncheon meat were apparently flying off the shelves. And while it's a wildly popular canned meat for locals, that wasn't the case at Seven Day Supermarket right across the street from us in Harmon. A manager there and another are placed under arrest accused of stealing it. Crystal Paco has a story. $12,600. That's how much canned beef, mostly ox and palm corned beef, was reportedly stolen from Seven Days Supermarket in Harmon. 
Two men now under arrest charged with theft of property held in trust and theft of property by receiving. According to court documents, the store's owner was tipped off on the thefts. An employee reported warehouse manager Edwin Ocampo had taken 12 cases of corned beef and two cases of mackerel and gave those items to a former employee, Yacinto Namio. Those items totaled over $1,300. When interviewed by police, Ocampo reportedly confessed to the crime, admitting that Namio asked him for money, but he didn't have any. That's why he gave him the cases of canned meat instead. Though he denied stealing more than the 12 cases of canned meat, Ocampo apparently gave himself away. Court documents state he tried to tell police the remaining cases were transferred to another store. That's why they were unaccounted for. Police, however, never told him what other items were allegedly missing. When asked how he knew, Ocampo said several cases of ox and palm corned beef had gone missing months ago. He said he was accused in those thefts as well. This wouldn't be the first case of the corned beef crook. Just last month, Peter Jr. Nand and Frankie Roberto were charged with retail theft. The pair allegedly stole $400 worth of ox and palm and tried to sell the canned meat for $50 a case. KUM files show they were stopped thanks to a quick-thinking store employee who took down their license plate as they tried to get away. So could the thefts be a result of price hikes caused by the tax increase or an apparent corned beef theft ring? We'll let you decide. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco. Also tonight, a 41-year-old man is under arrest, charged with forcing himself into a Harmon home on Tuesday. Leonard John Martinez allegedly pushed through the front door, shoving it open and prompting the victim to fall to the floor. The victim reportedly ran into the bedroom and locked the door behind him. As Martinez banged on the door, he allegedly yelled, quote, If you open this door, I'll kill you. I'll send my boyfriend to shoot you. Martinez faces charges of home invasion, burglary, criminal trespass, and harassment. Drugs and tobacco. Corrections officers stopping those items from being smuggled into the prison today. DEPCOR leaders confirming an attempt was made to throw a package containing eight round containers of chewing tobacco in a small bag with the drug ice into the facility. The items were found near the dome housing units. An inmate who investigators believe is a recipient of the contraband is being questioned. DOC's Internal Affairs and GPD's Mandania Drug Task Force is investigating. Well, another one bites the dust as another member of the 34th Guam legislature has told us they will not be seeking re-election. Now more are looking to fill the anticipated vacancies at the session hall as 40 new faces have picked up senatorial packets from the GEC. Chris Barnett reports. Senator Tommy Morrison is saying adios. In a KUAM News exclusive, the Republican senator from Umatic says he won't be seeking re-election, meaning a total of seven legislative incumbents are saying escalators to the legislature. Morrison, celebrating his 43rd birthday today, said the time has come to move on. I've never saw this as a, a career for me. Um, I always saw this as a special opportunity for me to contribute to the development and growth of our island. I've been very blessed in, to be in this position to serve the people of Guam, and uh, I'm, I'm very humbled by that. The senator, a former DPR director in the Camacho Moylan administration, also headed the Bureau of Stats and Plans under Governor Eddie Calvo. He ran for senator in 2012, finishing fourth, and served three terms in the Republican minority. Youth and community programs, uh, public safety measures, responsible economic development, particularly in the South. The last few years haven't been easy for Morrison. He's lost two brothers, something he still struggles with today. It's been a challenge for our family. Morrison joined Senators B.J. Cruz and Tom Atta and fellow Republican Fernando Estevez in not running again after this term. Senators Frank Ugga, Dennis Rodriguez, and Michael Sinicolas are all seeking higher office. A source is telling me Senator Luis Munia and Senator Jim Espaldon may also be contemplating stepping away from politics. Veteran Democrat Senator Atta describes himself as a moderate. He's leaving politics after 18 years, including two unsuccessful tries at Adeloupe. Atta first serving in the 22nd Guam legislature, and he served a total of nine terms as a senator. I may not be running again for the legislature, but I'm still living in this community, and I'm certainly going to be keeping an eye on what's going on. And if it seems like things are re, you know, going awry, I certainly would uh, step up and say, you know, maybe you want to consider uh, doing it this way. 
Adam turns 70 in May, and the elder statesman says that with so many incumbents not coming back, the people of Guam should expect that newer politicians aren't always going to get it right. You're going to get bit in the butt, and you're going to learn from that, and the next time, you're going you're gonna to be able to do it better. Right. But you, we've, we've got to allow them to make their mistakes. Morrison also has some advice to offer. Look at these issues as not as a Democrat or Republican issues. These are Guam issues. And, you know, be, be a realist. Don't burn any bridges behind you because we may not agree on a certain issue today, but I tell you, tomorrow and the day after, we, we may need each other's help. Morrison says he's been thinking about leaving the legislature and recently celebrating his son's third birthday helps seal the deal. I'm just hoping to have more moments like that uh, with my family. Although the two Toms are from different eras and different sides of the aisle, they both agree it's time for family to come first. I made the mistake with my two daughters. They grew up and, and I missed that, you know, because I was too busy trying to establish my career. Well, I'm not going to make that same mistake with my grandkids. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. All right, good hustle by our guy Chris on that report. And please stay tuned, Guam, because when we come back, one resident sour grapes about public transit. That's when we come back. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM news app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. I'm in the club. Half a day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half a day, I'm in the club. Now you can choose your favorite Nissan rides and 30 flyaways on Philippine Airlines when you play Micronesia Mall's Your Best Choice Giveaway. To play, present mall receipts to win a new Versa Note SR, the Crossover Rogue Sport SV, the Heritage Edition 370Z, or you can choose a tough Nissan truck. Plus, there are great instant prizes from Burger King and Foot Locker. Win more cars, trips, and prizes when you play Micronesia Mall's Your Best Choice Giveaway. Devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Welcome back to the show, everybody. If you are a bus driver, how has your experience been? For one island commuter, the ride has been more than just a little bumpy, as after experiencing several issues with the Guam Regional Transit Authority and being turned away, he is now turning to us at KUM for help. Kayani Manjola has a story. For one local bus rider and his family, 
The journey with Guam Regional Transit Authority has not been very pleasant. Derido resident Curtis George and his family rely on the transit system as their main source of transportation. But George says he's had numerous issues with GRTA and their management, issues that have left him fed up. My mother-in-law, she's, she's disabled and when she calls for power, it's always booked. Para, as in the paratransit service, which is eligible for ADA certified passengers and for those who are determined eligible under certain circumstances. George says that his mother-in-law is both physically and mentally impaired, which is why he has continuously tried to make a reservation. They say you have to call two days ahead, but every time you call two days ahead, they say it's always booked or we'll call you back. And as soon as we, call, we get the call back, they say it's, it's full. Even recounting a recent situation where his family had used the paratransit to a destination and then denied pickup after. And he says he's made more than six complaints to the GRTA office, but the responses he's received haven't been any more helpful. GRTA's manager, every time I call in, he even tells me don't give problems to us, you know, you're bringing us problems. George feels that he and his family are now being discriminated by GRTA because of an initial complaint made to management by his father-in-law. But overall, he's concerned for his family, especially with the transit system's current conditions. If you see it, there's no, shel there's no shelter here, no, bu no bathroom at all. And even with the recent increase in buses, the riding experience has not improved. In fact, he says breakdowns happen often. Every week, Two of the buses end up breaking down, so then we're stuck. Ultimately, he just wants something to be done about GRTA, and soon. I care about people, so if, if the manager says, you know, he's doing a good job, I believe he's not, you know, and we, the government needs to look at this. It was just last month that the department appeared before the legislature for an oversight hearing. Meantime, GRTA officials declined to comment on George's concerns at this time. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Kiani Mediola. Guam is a paradise tainted with illegal dumping. That notion coming from the Jigo mayor who says they finally have the money to clean up. And as our Carpenter Lahi files in this next report, at least one woman is hoping the trash illegally dumped on her street is cleaned up and soon. Trash missing the bins, dumped on her driveway. Sharon Torres has been calling the EPA and the Jigo mayor's office to clean up the two abandoned cars and trash in front of her home. It is dangerous for the kids. I see children playing in and around here, and uh, there's broken glass. The vehicle back there uh, was burned, and uh, the fire department had to come and put it out. She remembers when one car caught fire, a safety hazard with no response. They always keep saying they don't have the funds or um, but, you know, as far as abandoned vehicles are concerned, Governor Guam has a lot of property. Why can't they open up an area and allow people come and, and, and abandon, put their cars there, dump it there, you know, instead of dumping it on the side of the road. But Jigo Mayor Rudy Mantanani says they found funds this week to clean up other abandoned cars dumped past Anderson Air Force Gate across Manhita Farm. Work they'll start as early as Friday. We're going to be picking up the trash, the, you know, that consists of the tires, the couches, the, the vehicles. We're pretty lucky that we have uh, monies that came from EPA to get rid of these uh, vehicles. A problem he admits is widespread in his village. A lot of our residents seem to think that this is the, only the government's problem, but this is our problem. It endangers our, our health, you know. This stinky stuff ain't good for your body. Pride, he says, this should encourage others to keep Jigo or their village clean. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Tirlahi. Well, a popular travel destination for many, including travelers from Guam, will be closed to tourists at the end of the month. Public reports state that the Philippine island of Boracay will be closed due to inadequate sewage treatment. The closure for tourists begins on April the 26th and is expected to last about a half a year. Country President Rodrigo Duterte said the sewage problem has turned its beaches into a cesspool. The cleanup of plants is underway. UOG administrative law students are hosting a free forum Friday to talk policy. The topic, reductions in the workforce, layoffs and furloughs. Grace Donaldson, a master's student, explains it's not a debate but an informative Q&A with public officials. We simply want to say, no, what will be the impact on the government employees who in turn will impact the economy of Guam and what are those processes they need to understand and learn 
Um, that's what this forum is about. Oh, a couple weeks. The event will take place from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. at UOG School of Business and Public Administration. we got sports coming up after the break, but first, your island weather. celebrating our 135th anniversary today, both in the outlying regions on which we hub and also here in Guam itself. It means so much to our team here in Guam. It means a lot to us in the Matson management team because what it says is we're here to stay. It's a real physical manifestation of our commitment to this region. It's so important that we hire locally, we develop talent locally, we train locally. What's been a wonderful addition to our approach there is that many of the people who started off in Guam have gone off into significant leadership roles elsewhere in the company. This is our headquarters here in Guam in Micronesia. And when we talk about putting down our roots, it's not just doing business, it's about everything we do with our friends, our customers, and our employees. I believe that nobody can replicate what we do, and that's why we have such a great team and such a great service and why we're successful. This is our home, this is our life, and we're happy to make a difference in everyone else's life. Come out for the 4th Annual Chucky Run and Fun 5K, 2K, and Flyaway Giveaway. Join us Saturday, April 14th at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Show at 5.30 and go at 6 a.m. T-shirts, medals, and other cool prizes, refreshments, and indoor activities after the races. Grand prize drawing for all participants is a trip package for two to Manila. Register at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. $8 for students, $12 for adults, and group of four super saver for just $35. The 4th Annual Chuck E. Run and Fun 5K, 2K, and Flyaway Giveaway. See you there. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports, brought to you by Triple J. If you haven't registered for the United Airlines Guam Marathon, there's still some open spots. Just head on down to the Hoffa Day Expo tomorrow at the PIC. And don't forget, it is packet pickup on Friday and Saturday. Check it out. Mandatory packet pickup is tomorrow at the PIC Pacific Pavilion during the Hoffa Day Expo from 11 to 6 p.m. And on Saturday from 9 to 5 p.m., you can still register for the run at the Expo, so make sure to make your way down. And this is mandatory for all participants to pick up your race packet, which includes your race bag, your race bib, your timing chip, souvenir booklet, and your event shirt. Event merchandise will be available. There will also be cultural booths, running merchandise, photo booth, and food concessions. There's space available for the 5K, 10K, half, and full marathon. So stop by at the registration table down at the expo. And while you're there, take a wander through the rest of the expo. Visit some of the sponsor booths and the vendor booths. We'll have United down there. We'll have uh, KUAM with a booth, Docomo and Gatorade. There'll be prizes to give away. There'll be live entertainment and activities for you to take part in. And also Jamaican Grill will be there uh, serving food all day. The 2018 APL Smoke and Wheels Racing Weekend is scheduled for April 13th through the 15th at the Guam International Raceway Park in Jigo. Tickets are $10 for a one-day pass and $20 for a weekend pass available at all foodies locations. The big four-hour endurance race will feature four categories this year. We tried to simplify it so we could be more inclusive, get more cars out. Basically, we divided it into anything with four cylinders, two-wheel drive, anything with four cylinders, four-wheel drive. Those are two classes. And then anything with more than four cylinders, six-cylinder, V8, V10, whatever, two-wheel drive, and then any size.
A crunchy medley of tasty crispy garlic chips, a dramatic drizzle of smooth, delicious, and flavorful, delectably creamy garlic aioli. All come together with a mouthwateringly juicy tomato slice and crisp iceberg lettuce atop crispy buttermilk chicken on a soft, warm artisan roll. <sighs> Luckily, you can take all the time you need to savor every bite. The Signature Crafted Recipes Collection by McDonald's. Guam is more than a tiny island in the Pacific. This magical place is where I call home. This island inspires me to learn and explore what's around me. It teaches me that there are no shortcuts in life and that the long way home may just be the scenic route. and that even the dirt roads can lead you to beautiful destinations. We got some birthdays to do for the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Here are tonight's lucky recipients. Happy birthday wishes from all of us at the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club to Danny Dumalan. Happy 12th birthday, boy boy. We all love you very much from mommy and the entire family. And happy belated birthday wishes tonight going out to Lachey Napati. And you can be a part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Just head on over to our website. And that's going to do it for us here on Prime Time. The What's next? In the mix. What do you got for us tonight? Uh, tonight we have Paddles Against Cancer. We also have Trench Kids Challenge. Uh, we have highlights from some of the KM kids who participated in the event, as well as other kids that took part in the trench. And we've got Chris Barnett. He's got a tulip recipe and he makes live tulip local quiche. Oh, it was so good. I tried it. Yeah. And live local Fridays with Jack Larimer. All right. Watch next. And if you can't catch it, go to our YouTube channel. You can watch it, share it, talk about it, have fun. Bye. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT and E. <laughs> The Mix is presented by California Pizza Kitchen. Visit them today at the Holiday Resort Hotel. Hafa day, everybody. I'm Sabrina Salas Matanani, and welcome to another episode of In the Mix. It's a devastating illness that affects so many on Guam. But recently, hundreds of island residents came together to raise money for Paddles Against Cancer. Six Paddles Against Cancer event started nine years ago. Every year that we've been out here, uh, the uh, community has really come out, including our corporate sponsors, to support this uh, fundraising for cancer. So it's been a really good turnout all these years. From corporations of compassion to families who teamed up to paddle for their loved ones, there was purpose and passion behind every stroke. South Pacific Petroleum Corporation Business Development Manager, Mark Sablon. In my family, I have uh, at least four relatives that have been uh, diagnosed with cancer, went through the treatment, and thank God, uh, on the stage to recovery. I saw a real change in their lifestyle from being really active, and after they were diagnosed with it, um, they fought and fought, went off island for treatment. Uh, there were many prayers from the family, uh, various doctors obviously uh, contributed to their recovery and uh, right now they are home, uh, recovering, some are already out and about. 
doing what they used to do. So, you know, uh, we just have to uh, uh, believe in the grace of God. And also it takes a lot of family support uh, to keep uh, these people going and fight cancer. Companies like Midpac, Island Beverage, and IWS came out in full force. Marketing Director Kim Gogui. This year we have three teams. We've actually started Paddles Against Cancer for since its inception. But this year we have t three teams. Team Coors Light, the Silver Bullet, Team Tito's Handmade Vodka, and Team Heineken, the Red Star. Our company grandfather, Edward M. Cavill, he actually passed away from cancer. So it's a big part of our company's mission. And we support anything.